This video has been kindly sponsored by Audible. Hi there, I'm Guy, and it's flashback time. I've been making Warhammer painting, hobby, and battle report videos as midwinter minis for almost three years now, but this time last year I decided to give it my best shot and make the channel my full-time job. Since then I've done loads of fun challenges, painted hundreds and hundreds of minis, made loads of terrain, painted cool retro models with old paints, filmed more ridiculous battles, and I've even started working on the biggest 40k mini ever made. But underneath all of these educational, entertaining, and dare I say it, fun videos, there lies a deep, deep shame. Last April I made a video cataloguing all of the Warhammer stuff that I owned that I hadn't at least built and primed to basically get it ready for being featured in a painting video. Piles of shame are a pretty common thing among Warhammer fans. Most people see miniature painting as a slow paced, relaxing, luxurious way to spend time. And it's not uncommon for a single model to take hours, days, or even weeks to finish. Or years. Combine that slow paced painting with Games Workshop's rapid release rate of limited edition box sets and cool exclusive must have minis, and you start to see how the problem arises. So how big was my pile of shame last year? Well, all in all, I had 592 models that were either still on the sprue or assembled but not even primed. Now my girlfriend Penny wasn't too impressed. Oh God, Jesus Christ. <laughs> so we set a kind of soft rule that I wasn't gonna buy anything else until I'd made a good dent in my pile of shame. Well, I love a challenge, and that sent me into hobby overdrive for the rest of the year. And I managed to paint 416 models and terrain pieces over the course of 2020. Not a bad effort, and by doing some quick maths that would surely mean my pile of shame was down to 176 models, right? Well, not quite. Some of the stuff in that video was totally painted up. The Craftwell suck collecting box, done. All of that orc stuff, done. Blackstone fortress expansions, you bet. And loads of the terrain sprues were used in my start collecting deathmatch arena. But as I re-watched that video and looked around the shelves of my studio, I saw quite a few familiar faces. Time to give it another go, I think, and have a recap of my pile of shame for 2021. Did I manage to reduce it with all of that painting I did last year, or have my collector tendencies caught up with me and actually made it bigger? Before we get going, why don't you drop a guess in the comments? Tell me what you think the grand total is going to be before you watch the rest. And while you're doing that, let me quickly tell you about the sponsor of this video, Audible. The last time I ran an Audible sponsor in a video, I asked everyone what Warhammer 40k titles they'd recommend, and the Eisenhorn series just kept coming up. So we used a couple of credits to buy the first two audiobooks in the series, Xenos and Malleus, and started listening. I had to admit, from the Black Library excerpts I'd read in their promo booklets, I was kind of expecting the worst, but I have to say I was pleasantly surprised. Toby Longworth's narration is stellar. He's got a perfectly dark, grizzled voice for this kind of stuff, and it's also superbly authored by Dan Abnett, who's penned loads of highly rated stories for 2000 AD, DC, Marvel, Doctor Who, and obviously loads of stuff for Warhammer. As far as the story goes, Xenos follows the trigger-happy escapades of the Inquisitor Gregor Eisenhorn, generally kicking ass and taking names. Think of it less as a Warhammer book and more of an ultra-violent detective story in space. It's also quite refreshing to experience the universe of Warhammer 40k without the obsession with space marines and their terrible dialogue. They'll be trying to drink their own sweat to survive, brother, 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 brothers, brother. With Audible Premium Plus, you get one credit a month, which you can spend on any audiobook, no matter what it would usually cost. It gets added to your library and it's yours forever, even if you pause or cancel your membership one day. You can refund and swap stuff you're not enjoying, and there's also tons of free stuff like serialized shows and podcasts on the platform too. For me, Audible and Warhammer just go hand in hand perfectly. Listening to an immersive audiobook while you paint or build models is just such an amazing, productive way to pass the time, and I'm really looking forward to listening to the next book, Malleus. If that sounds right up your alley, follow the link in the video description, start your 30 day free trial and see what you think. If you prefer to type stuff in the old fashioned way, go to audible.com slash midwinter minis, or if you live in the USA, text midwinter minis to 500500. And again, huge thanks to Audible for sponsoring this video, and that money is going straight in the Gork and Mork Twins Fund. Guy, as much as you and many of the people that comment on your videos would like us to call the babies Gork and Mork, it is not happening. <laughs> Fine. Uh, let's get this stuff on the table, shall we? 
Okay, so first up we have the Start Collecting Astra Militarum box and also the Start Collecting Tau Empire box. Obviously I had to get these for my Start Collecting Deathmatch series. And to complete the Necron side of that tournament I did need to pick up the Command Barge because I was missing that. I've also got this cool box of Eldar Shadow Spectres that a fan of the channel, White Hammer, sent. Now, not strictly Warhammer, but still definitely miniature games. I have the Sky Tear box set that I keep meaning to try to paint, but I just never get round to it. And I also have the first version of Zombicide, which has tons of miniatures inside. Now, I do have an Indomitus box, which a lot of people notice in the background. Now, I did paint a few of these Necrons for a video last year, but I do have essentially four boxes worth of Indomitus Necrons in one box here. Of course, we've got the latest edition, Cursed City, which will maybe end up being my first foray into Age of Sigmar. Let's pop that on top of there. Now let's move on to some incredibly cool retro stuff that I picked up at the start of last year. First, we've got the Warhammer Fantasy box set, the first version that came in a box, fifth edition. And this practically has everything on sprue and certainly nothing is painted. And sticking with fantasy, I also have this Skeleton Army box set from the late 80s. I was also lucky enough to not only pick up Hero Quest with most of the models unpainted, but also Advanced Hero Quest, again with most of the models unpainted apart from the heroes. And obviously both of these boxes are not new at all, they're both very well used, but I think I'll have some good fun with them. I also picked up the original Space Crusade. Now the guy who I bought these off didn't keep the miniatures in the original box, but I do have two old Citadel paint set boxes filled with all of the models, and hardly any of them are painted. The same old Hammer Hall also had this cool little wooden box full of old Citadel and Aral Partha lead miniatures. Very heavy hand sculpted minis with tons and tons of character. We also have the complete Necromunda box that I got for the Necromunda unboxing video. And everything apart from that single Goliath that I painted is still waiting for paint. Obviously still have the Warhammer 40,000 second edition box set. I have painted up a few models from this, especially the Gretchen, so the tally's not quite as high from this one as it was last time, but yep, yeah, it's still here. Starting to stack up a little bit here. I did paint five of the Blood Angel Terminators and five of the Gene Stealers, but that still leaves quite a few models left from the third version of Space Hulk. Now in this cool Gorkamorka box, I don't actually have the original Gorkamorka. This is where I keep most of the cool smaller things that fans of the channel have sent me that I'm going to paint up in future videos. There's loads of cool rare models and even stuff that people have sculpted themselves or designed and printed. Like this tiny mini-me. Next up, a draw from my Bisley cabinet that's full of Assault on Black Reach Space Marines and also two sets of the Deathwing bikes from Dark Vengeance. Now we get to the really embarrassing stuff, boxes full of sprues. In this one we've got the Palanite Enforcers and the Death Cult models from the most recent Necromunda release. We've also got some Dark Angel Space Marines, the Alicidian Star Striders from Kill Team Rogue Trader, and all of the Rebels and Terminators from the Terminator Genesis box game. Time for box number two! This one has got my spare Chaos Space Marines from the Chaos Space Marine box and also the leftovers from Shadow Spear. We've got the parts to make two Armager Warglaives, I've got quite a few Skitari or Skitari eye models that were the other team in the box sets that I wanted. And I've got some spare Tyranid Termagants, pretty useful for practicing paint schemes. And that's it for that one. Now box number three, oh god. We've got this pipe terrain sprue. Got some more easy to build space marines. There's the Dark Eldar Helions that were in the Gangs of Kimura box set. We've got two sets of Gene Stealer Cultist sprues here. And also the remaining Primaris Space Marines from the Dark Imperium box set. Speaking of Space Marines, I've also got a few of the cool Death Watch models that came in the Death Watch Overkill box set. We also have a set of Imperial Scions that need built up, and the terrain pieces that came in the Kill Team Road Trader box. And that's not actually it for the boxes, there's still another one, and this has more terrain. These are the Conservators. We also have a Manufactorum set left over from when I was building the walls of my Kill Team Arena. And I've got a couple of sets of the objective markers that they released at the launch of 9th edition Warhammer 40k. And we also have the Mars Pattern Warlord Titan uh, and all of its weapons, which, you know, even though it comes in about five separate boxes... That still only counts as one! Oh my god, this is stacking up so high. And there's another one? Let me give you some context. I was pleasantly surprised when Guy made his challenge for the thousand subscribers to buy a Warlord and then got his thousand subscribers and laughed my butt off when he forgot to buy the head and then laughed even harder when he put the thumb on backwards. And I thought, he's having all this fun, but you're being left out. 
Is that a small titan? It's the exact same titan, but in one eighth scale. So that's another warlord titan, although obviously much smaller this time. And that is it. Okay, so last time we did this, I kept a running tally as I went, uh, but this time Penny has been keeping count as I've been putting everything on the table, and I don't know the grand total, but I've got a horrible feeling it's quite a lot more than it was this time last year. So Penny, can you enlighten me? Yes, I can. And it is quite a lot more than it was last time. What did you get last time? Uh, all in all, it was 592 models in 2020. Yeah, it's quite a bit worse than that. Do you want to guess? Uh, 750. No, that's not enough. 760. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be a very slow day if we do it like that. Lay it on me. Um, 1,042. Oh, my God. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah. That's quite a lot, isn't it, Guy? Mm-hmm. So you've actually gained nearly 500 models <laughs> but i painted a lot of models i painted like so you bought a thousand then <laughs> <laughs> i don't know if that makes it better or worse it's only three a day uh, <laughs> god i mean at least they fit in the room but you can't buy another thousand this year so what's the takeaway here guy buys too much warhammer and doesn't paint enough of it but I do paint a lot. Maybe the problem is I'm just buying way too much. Yeah, I said enough. I said you, you buy too much and don't paint enough. So you're going to have to do a lot of lovely painting videos this year. Yeah. I think you can do it. I'm remaining positive about this. Otherwise, I'd cry. <laughs> now, being realistic here, this is my job. So I'll always need a few projects ready to go at any one point. But after coming face to face with my hoarder tendencies and doubling my pile of shame in the course of one year, I have decided on a few rules that might help me sort out this mess. Rule one, no buying new Games Workshop stuff for one year. To be honest, I've never made videos on brand new products anyway. Even my Blackstone Fortress series started about a year after the game had come out. I also don't really want to support or be seen to condone the weird FOMO limited availability special edition nonsense that Games Workshop have been doing with all of their recent big box releases. That rule should be pretty easy, maybe it's something you might want to try too. Rule 2? Giveaways. Do more of them. I gave away over 100 models in 2020 in random competitions on the channel, but now, thanks to the amazing help of the moderators on the Midwinter Minis Discord server, we have a monthly Painty Points competition, and I'm donating prizes to the winners. Last month I gave away a Tech Priest, some Death Guard, and some Poxwalkers. This month I'm giving some cool terrain kits to the winners, and looking at this monstrous pile of shame, it looks like I'm set for prizes for probably a couple of years. Rule 3? Well, it might sound pretty obvious, but do more painting and challenge videos. Let's see how much of that backlog I can clear in 2021. Now last year when I did the first Pile of Shame video, I had quite a lot of people in the comments wondering just how much I'd actually spent on all of that Warhammer stuff. Well the thing is, because this is my job, I keep all of the receipts for everything I buy, so I have a pretty good idea of how much it cost. So as it stands, the total amount spent on this Pile of Shame is... Pretty much £3,500 bang on. But keep in mind the Warlord Titan by itself is about half of that. Without the Titan, we're looking at about £1,800. And don't get me wrong, that is a lot of money. But this stuff has taken me years to accumulate. And realistically, it's going to give me a lifetime of fun painting it up and playing games with it. Warhammer is an expensive hobby, but it's not the only one. And to be honest, I wouldn't trade all of this for a high-end fishing rod or a high-tech mountain bike fancy golf clubs or a fancy bass guitar. Wait, what? So that's kind of it for this video, I suppose. But did you guess higher or lower than my grand total? Or were you bang on? If you came within 100, give yourself a pound in the back. Don't forget we've now got Midwinter Minis logo t-shirts and hoodies available through the Snaz Dragon store. Check the link in the description. And a huge thanks to our latest supporters over on Patreon for signing up and actively supporting the channel. And with two tiny babies about to imminently arrive, it is so, so appreciated. Here's a roll call of all of our latest members. David Fuentes, Brendan Levaninen, Froom, Maltrios, Wade Norcross, Dan Wan Hanman, Jessica Schlott, Tramari, Joey Menaheny Ralph, Avery Jacobs, Bill Rutherford, Chris C, Nugo520, Alex Gluck, Seamus Halford, Josh Harper, Tim Ten Hav, Matthew Timms, Thomas Kleberg, Pierre Renaudot, Frank Lima, Avalon Raven, 
Chris Blackwood, Malethion, Torberic, Soren R, Peach Kai, Chris Allen, Long Rob, A. Wallian, Nathaniel Smith, Cherry is a Berry, Roman Posner, Bronze Gear, Jan Olsen, Sam E, Zachary Wilson, Christian Sandberg, At Butthole Full of Bees, Jan Frank, Catalin Posthuma, Snike 23, Jund Bacon, Walan Vo, Juju Bullseye, Zamfarescu Adrian Mihai, and Just G. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you next time. Will I be a dad by then? Who knows? Maybe? Bye for now. Thank you.